Hey everyone, it's Desiree, and I hope your weekend is going awesomely so far. But I am here with another video from Rubber Stamp Tapestry, Peg Stamps, and I'm going to be using the two new ones that were released called Red Geranium and Cottage Geraniums, and I believe they're having a sale right now, so go check it out! But these are really, really um, beautiful details in these geraniums. So we've all heard it before if you've seen my previous videos. I'm absolutely in love with these peg stamps. I think they are so versatile and you can do so much with them. So what I'm going to do is I also pulled in a very old Stampin' Up! stamp set. This is no longer available, but I really liked the wooden box that came in it. So I'm going to be using that. I'm going to be using an aqua brush. I'm using a different size of card base. These actually come from the Simon Says kits when they put those little card bases in there. And I just grabbed one of those. Um, and it actually measures four and seven eighths by three and a half. So if you're looking to cut this, cut it four and seven eighths by seven and then score it at the three and a half inch mark. This piece that I'm working on right here is a Canson XL watercolor, watercolor piece. Now, I still can't talk. Um, and again, I take a pad of that and I cut it into quarters. So this right now is actually at four and a half by six. But that's okay. I always cut them down. So I'm using Distress inks to stamp with. Now again, these inks are not made to stamp with. Um, but they are great to use to put on a stamp, put onto watercolor paper, and now do what I'm doing with my aqua brush, just accenting, accenting it with water, you will get a watercolor look. So again, you can get watercolor effects. You don't need to be a watercolor artist. So the color that I used for that box is brushed corduroy. And now I'm pulling in fired brick, barn door, dusty concord, seedless preserves, peeled paint, and shabby shutters. So of course that's a light and a dark of the same, you know, of a red, a purple, and a green. So, you know I have a ball with these stamps. I just stamp away. So, of course, this is going to look like a flower pot. So I'm just stamping down these colors. I have a little tiny baby white folded up. That's how I clean these peg stamps after I'm using them. But you can see I'm going into both colors sometimes, too where I'm going directly down into the light one and I'm angling the peg stamp into the darker just to get a little darker shade. Now I'm going to come in with my aqua brush and I just want to move that ink because remember, your distress inks are water reactive. So I could actually move these. There's no rhyme or reason to it. I'm literally squiggling the, if again, that's a technical term in us card making world. I'm just squiggling that brush up over the areas that were stamped. I'm not worried too much about cleaning my aqua brush, only if there's a lot of water that comes down. I'm okay with some of these colors melding together. I know that some of the flowers are going over that brown, and I may pull up that brown a little bit. It's okay. Again, I'm really going for a watercolor look when it comes to this card. So I'm just continuing to fill in those geraniums. And since I used the two kits, I had two different sizes of the open space geraniums and also of the smaller ones. So these, these peg stamp sets do merge together very well. You can interact with them which I think is great. Now, interact, I believe, was the wrong word. So you can interchange. That's the word I was looking for. Now I'm going to use the greens. So, of course, this is going to be um, the leaves that are part of this flower pot. So you have that fern-looking one where I use the very pale color, and now you actually have the geranium leaf vine a little bit, and I'm just placing that all throughout this piece. It could be a little busy, and I have to admit, when I first finished this, it looked busy to me. Um, I'm like, oh, I, I shouldn't have stamped so much green. I shouldn't have done this. 
you know, again, you, we learn as we go. But I have to say, after it dried overnight and I stopped looking at it, I absolutely love this card now. So, again, don't always go with your first impressions. Walk away from it. Come back to it. But you can take those pointers in. I am using my heat gun um, to dry it and to set it. I've put a little bit of the brushed corduroy. Sometimes I just don't have a slick surface near me. So I just use a piece of watercolor paper and I just scratch some of the color down and I'm picking it up with my aqua brush, my water brush. And I just wanted to ground this pot. Just needed to, to give it some, some grounding. I'm also putting a little bit of green in there. We get shadows. And I learned that from Lindsay, uh, the frugal crafter, from watching her do her awesomely beautiful watercolor pictures. But she always tends to pull some of those colors down that she used because we may not realize it, but we are seeing those shadows. And she explains it so much better. I encourage you to watch her watercolor videos. The stamp that I'm using here, just a note, actually came from a set that I got from a magazine. So I have no name for that. I am so sorry. I did use one of my Lawn Fawn Stitch Rectangle dies, and that cut measures four and a half by three and a quarter. If you don't have that die or you just want to cut a different panel. I did distress. See, I'm in a distressing mood with vintage photo around the edges. I'm, it's, I'm on a roll with it. So I did use that along the edges um, just to make that stand up off of my card base. And you can see that there. And, and again, that's not when it dries. This is what it looked like when it dries. Sometimes, you know, the green, because we can never get our um, photos to go perfectly. But I think it's really quick. You can get watercolor effects perfectly from these peg stamps. I encourage you, please, to check them out. And, of course, I will have more videos um, because they send me some wonderful products to work with. So if you like this video, hit the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit that subscribe button down there. Stay up to date. We've got so much going on because I got myself fortunately involved in so much. And that, again, is because of you all. So thank you so much for supporting me. The products that I used will be listed down below. If you have a question, please leave that down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Again, I hope you did enjoy this. There will be more Another Technique video coming up along with part two of the kit merge. Always remember, everyone, be creative.